Let's have a look in this little exercise at blending a layer from a source image into a target image layer. Now, Apply Image lets you blend the layer from a source image into a target image layer. The images are composited into a single layer. This is not a mask, but a joining together of two layers. Channel expressions and blend modes are available to complete the layers. The source image can be scaled automatically to the target image horizontally, vertically, or both, avoiding having to size the image equally first. Now I'll let you play with this, but what we're going to do first is open the target image, and there we have it there. From the Layers panel, select the layer that you want to blend the source image with. Now obviously, we're going to blend it with that layer. Now I've got a hidden blue panel underneath there that you can see, and I want to blend that into that original image. But I've got that exported to a PNG. That's just there so you can see it. I can actually delete that and it won't make any difference. From the Layers panel, I've got the layer selected that I want to blend. Now from the Filters panel, select Apply Image. There it is there. Now tap Image. That's there. There's an option Current Layer, but I want to just select that image and select the source image, that's that there. There we go. It wouldn't do it while I had that other thing there. Now I've got the source image is in downloads. That's the blue panel that I had before. And you can see it there. Very nice. Okay, nice blue thing. But what we've got to do with that is change the blend mode. Now what I want to do with that blend mode, lighter, colour, dodge, add, overlay. Now as it's a young girl, let's make this a soft light one. Just tap that so it's there. Now there's two arrows up the top here. You click the apply arrow that's next to the cross. Apply. And there it is. Now have a look over there. You've still only got one panel. Let me get rid of that blue panel so it doesn't confuse you. There we go, one panel. It's not a mask, it's an application. It's actually applied to it. Now that's pretty cool. Let me do that again. Undo, 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 undo. And there she is. Select the layer that you want to apply the other image to. Select Filters, which is the little filter thing there. Select Apply Image. Now you've got Apply Image up there. And we can go to there. Download the image I'm going to apply over it. In this case, it's a blue panel. That's fairly straightforward. Now you can see there's two next to the down the import box there, and that goes away when I do that. Let me see if I can lock that on. No. Okay, you can see there's just there and just there are those two little boxes. That restricts the height and the width of the image that you're pulling in. If they're both on, then it con constrains it to that. Now, we want... Soft light and click the apply arrow, and there she is. Now you can see that that panel's there. Now I got rid of that and we backed out of it, but we're back to where we had it just before. Now you've got a completely individual image there with the layer on it just as you wanted, but there it is, there you see. It's not a mask, it's not another layer, it's, <coughs> it's a single blended layer. Very neat. Okay, have some fun with that one. Now, let's have a look at our second hidden option. This is on the iPad, remember. Now, I've got Roboto Flex on there, which is a variable font. Now, I know it's variable because 
that's what we put in there. Roboto Flex, Roboto Flex, however you like to pronounce that. Now, it, it being a variable font, how do we change the variable? And this is quite different than the desktop version. The desktop version has a symbol up the top of the on the on the panel that goes up there. Now I don't want that there. Let's hope that didn't make a new layer. I don't think it did. Okay, we've got Roboto Flex there, and you can change the size. As per normal, 79, there's 80, 80 points, Roboto Flex. Now, if I want to change the variables, if I want to vary that, you go to the side there where it says characters, the character panel, and the top line here goes off the screen, but that top line there, there's an arrow just there. Turn on the arrow. And there it says variations. Now there's our variations. So let me move that out of the way. The optical size. Let me make sure I've got that text selected. Yep. Optical size. 42. You can see it's it's not um, the size of the font, but more the the weight of the font, although the weight is next, 910, let's make that a 1,000. Grade, minus 0.75. The width, 125.8. Now you can see that's really enlarged that quite a bit. And the slant is minus 10 at the moment, which is the biggest you can get. Let's straighten that up a little bit and make it minus one. There we go. It's still got a slight slant on it, but not as bad as it was. But remember, regardless of how you modify that text, being a variable font, the variable fonts are found in variations from the character panel, which is that one there, text, into there, the character, into their variations. Got that? Character, text, and there's the layer. Now that's really all there is to it. That one's quite hidden. Let's have a look in here and see if we can find our way into that. Now let's hold the button down and see if we can see what that says. No, you don't get any extra help in that one. It just tells you that the option we've got selected is the text option. Go back to character. Hold that down. No, it doesn't tell you any different there. So some of these add to it, some don't. But that's where it is, right there. Text, the first layer, which is the character. And the next one is the variation. And you can modify that to whatever you like. You can show hidden axes. There's a whole bunch more of them there that the designer of the font added in there but doesn't necessarily want you to see. So you can leave them out and not confuse the issue too much. I haven't yet found a way of resetting those to what their defaults are, but that's all right. Just take notice of it before you make any alterations of what the previous one was. Now that's all there is to that little option. Very neat. What? Now I want to show you this hidden option, but I'll have to use Affinity Designer version 2.5 as it turns out, because the option is not quite working yet in Affinity Photo, but it works fine in Affinity Designer, and that is if you've got an image in your project like this and you want to change the HSL or HSV values, you go to HSL, tap on that, on the HSL symbol there, and you can see that it brings it up. Now, if you tap that, that brings up the hue, saturation and luminance. 
Now we want to adjust the luminance in this, but I want to adjust the HSV value, which is actually the value. So you tap on that, it's a toggle. So you can see it's dark and it's light, it's dark. That means it's on. Now you can tap that and bring it up. And although it says luminance there, that should be value because you're now in HSV mode. How do I know this? Because the other hidden option in here is the little question mark right down in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Now if you hold your pencil on that, you can see once the color bar is gone, that it brings up the display. Now it shows you there, right in the center of the screen, it shows you the options available in the HSL adjustment. Merge, Delete, Reset and HSV. That's hue, saturation and value for the V. Now why Affinity have still got luminance there, I don't know, but it's a convention. HSV is hue, saturation, value. Whereas HSL, that you can see there, is hue, saturation and luminance, which is what you've got there. So you tap that off and it's hue, saturation, luminance. That's quite right. Tap that so the toggle is on. Then tap the color circle and it brings up the one there. Now the one we're going to reduce the value and unfortunately it also means that that disappears. So I've set it to 100% value there. And you just tap on the screen there and it moves away. You can see the toggle is still on though. Remember that's showing you HSV value there. The HSV is on. And there we go, it's still got 100%. If I want to set that back to about zero, it's probably quicker just to type in the zero there than to try and work out what it's going to be. Mind you, if you go the other way, of course, that adds the value, black, 100% black value. To, it turns the whole thing black. Let's turn that back to zero, and there's our image back. Tap that and it's off. Now the HSV is still on, so I can tap that and it's off. Go back over here, tap that. Now go back to the layers and you can see we've got a HSL shift adjustment layer there. Now to get rid of that, just tap that there. Well, not get rid of the layer, but get rid of the symbol. If you want the symbol back up, just tap the HSV there again. Now you've got H hue, saturation, luminance, HSV is on now, and you've got hue, saturation, and it should be value. I'm hoping they'll change that one day. Now this is not, this is work, this all works in Affinity Photo, except that the slider has no effect in, the, in Affinity Photo at the moment. But they're working on it, it's in the bug report, so they'll fix it eventually. From my personal point of view, I'd really like them to fix it sooner rather than later. But I'm only one person in millions. So what I want doesn't count. But there we go. That's a, hit, a couple of hidden controls there. Remember that one there? That's important because that'll work on just about any other thing you've got. If you want that thing there to disappear, just tap there and it's gone. If you want it back... Tap that icon and it's back. Tap that one and it's gone. Okay, that's that hidden option. Now, let's have a look at some other hidden options that are in this object. Uh, now, it'll be Affinity Photo or Affinity Designer or Affinity Publisher. But I think I'll go to one of the ones in Affinity Photo next, which is really always difficult to find and really quite new in 2.5. See you there. So the last thing I want to show you is the navigator and that's that button there. Looks like a hmm, funny little open box. Now the navigator, you put your Apple Pencil in the middle of the image and you can move that image around wherever you want it. 
You might have it on the screen and you might be working in some part of it that you can only get to by moving it around. Now that's very nice, but you want it a bit smaller, so tap 50%. You want it a bit bigger, tap 100%. You want it even bigger, tap 200%. And with that there like that, you can move that around and you might be able to, you might be working on those pixels just where that little red spot is. So you need to move it over there and enlarge it 200%. Now, how nice is that? You can also just get it to fit. And that's the fit there. Rotation and zoom you can probably go 500%. And that's really down to pixel layer, isn't it? You can move that with your finger still, or you can move it with your pencil. There we go. Now you can work just as you like at the pixel level. Rotation. Rotation's locked. Let's unlock it. There we go. Just dragging that down, you can rotate that as you like. You'll notice up there in the navigator that the image up there has not rotated. Only the image on the screen is rotated. Now, if you don't want that to move, lock it. Now, that's where it stays. And you can see that the entire image has been rotated. Very useful, handy and often forgotten tool, that one. Okay, that's it. Five examples of hidden and very useful options that you perhaps don't use all that often, but should add to your workflow to really speed things up. So, enjoy. Go ahead. Make my day. Subscribe.